the Lewis structures of molecular compounds and polyatomic ions. Now we've done diatomic molecules, and then we did a little bit of, we did H2O2 and H3O+. What do we do when there's a little bit more complicated there? <coughs> Um, drawing Lewis structures is a little bit like um, balancing equations in that there's not one best, always right way to do it. Um, so there are different strategies. You might have learned a different way of drawing Lewis structures um, in your previous class. And if that is working for you, you can do that as long as you end up with the correct Lewis structure. The only method that isn't correct is always going to Google or you know, asking a friend, right? You have to be able to come up with it yourself. So these are the steps that the book gives us. First, we have to start off with the correct skeletal structure. So we need the, the correct element symbols, and we want to put them together, connect them together in the right way. This can be a little bit tricky sometimes. If it's really tricky, the problem will say, this one is the central atom. So just some guidelines for that. Hydrogen atoms are always going to be terminal. Terminal means on the end, right? It's like at the airport, you've got the concourse, and you've got the terminals. And the terminal is where the airplane comes. It's at the end, right? So hydrogens are always terminal. Because how many bonds can a hydrogen atom make? One. It can only make one bond because it only has one electron to share. So it can't be between two other atoms. It's always going to be on the outside, a little bit like the airplanes coming up to the airport. Airplanes. I spent a lot of time in airports yesterday. Um, another guideline is to put more electronegative atoms in terminal positions. So if you're trying to decide what goes in the middle and what goes on the outside, um, probably the more electronegative ones will go on the outside. So draw a skeleton. And then you need to figure out the total number of electrons. So this is the add up the valence electrons for each atom. And if you have an ion, you can do this for polyatomic ions. You have to consider the charge. If the charge is plus 2, that means you have to take away 2 electrons. If it's minus 3, you have to add 3 electrons. So you have to figure out how many dots do I have to play with. And then you're going to start passing out the electrons, the dots. And you're going to try to give octets or for hydrogen, a duet, to as many atoms as possible. And sometimes you can do that just fine with single bonds. If you can't make everybody happy, then we have to do some more sharing, and we have to make double or triple bonds as needed. But start out with single bonds. So let's do some examples. Write the Lewis structure for carbon monoxide. So this was pretty easy to make the skeleton for, because there's only two atoms. They must be connected to each other. So I'm going to put the carbon here, and there has to be a bond, a, at least a single bond, connecting the two atoms. So I'm going to draw that single bond. That line represents two electrons. Then we need to figure out how many valence electrons do we have for this entire molecule. How many does carbon have? Four. How many does oxygen have? Six. Four plus six equals ten. Okay, this is, this chapter, there's counting by twos. And there's adding whole numbers. It's not too bad, huh? OK, so we've got 10 dots that we can deal with here. So in the bond, there's two electrons. And if you have a hard time remembering that, put a dot at each end. That's fine. So there's two. I'm not going to leave those there. Two, four, six, eight, 10. They're always going to be in pairs. So just put them around in pairs. I have run out of dots. I have run out of electrons. I can only have 10 electrons showing on this diagram. Are carbon and oxygen happy? Do they have octets? No, they don't. I could take two electrons from this oxygen and give it to the carbon. That'll make carbon happy, but then oxygen's super unhappy. I don't have enough dots. When you don't have enough dots, we need to share more. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a pair of electrons that are not being shared, a lone pair, and I'm going to make them shared. So I'm going to erase these two electrons and put a line between. So I took that lone pair, and I made it now a bonding pair. Now we see this carbon has 2, 4, 6, 8. Carbon is happy. Oxygen 
Not so much. Two, four, six. I'm still short electrons. More sharing. So um, I don't want to take any more from oxygen. Oxygen is the one that doesn't have enough right now. The carbon is happy. Carbon needs to share more with the oxygen. So I'm going to take this lone pair and, and make it into a bonding pair. This, of course, is not what is happening when these atoms bond together, but this is how we do the Lewis structure. Now, this carbon has 2, 4, 6, 8, and the oxygen has 2, 4, 6, 8. Everybody's got 8. That looks a little weird, um, so we might draw it like this. I like to make them a little more symmetrical, but those are equivalent. Any questions? Okay, let's do H2CO. So we've got two H's, a C, and an O. We're going to put these in a long line, or what are we going to do? Well, what definitely is going to be on the outside? The, the two hydrogens. And the oxygen is going to be on the, on the outside, too, because it's more electronegative than carbon. So let's try starting out with carbon in the middle. And we'll attach a hydrogen over here and an oxygen over there. And then we've got kind of a choice where to put the hydrogen. Well, I'm going to put it, that was weird. I'm going to put it on, on the carbon. If you put it on the oxygen, you're going to run into trouble. You'll have to move it over. We don't have enough time for that right now. So two hydrogens, that's uh, two valence electrons, right? Carbon has four, oxygen has six. So here we've got 12 electrons. I already have six. Each, each of these bonds is two, two, four, six. So then I'm going to go eight, 10, 12. Ran out of dots. Is this good? Is that enough? Does oxygen have eight? Oxygen has two, four, six. Oxygen isn't happy. Everybody else is happy. We have to make everybody happy. So what do we do? We need to share more. If you don't have enough cookies to go around, that means that we have to share. So we share some cookies, and we still don't have enough, then we need to share more, right? You don't get half a cookie, you get a, a fourth of a cookie, right? So who's going to share, carbon or oxygen? Carbon, because carbon is in a good place. Carbon has eight. Oxygen is the one that needs more. So we're going to share um, carbon's lone pair. You could try sharing oxygen's lone pair, but then you'll find out that now carbon has too many, and you'll have to move the lone pair over anyway. Some of this will be trial and error. So I just moved a bonding pair, I'm sorry, a lone pair to a bonding pair. I'm not changing the number of electrons. But now the carbon has eight electrons. It has four bonds. Each is two electrons. And the oxygen has two bonds, that's four electrons, and two more pairs, that's eight. This also lines up with what I mentioned earlier, that if you, um, if you look at the Lewis structures for these two elements, how many lone pairs, I'm, I'm sorry, how many single electrons, non-paired electrons, does carbon have? Four. Carbon likes to form four bonds. In this compound, carbon has four bonds. One, two, three, four. Oxygen's uh, Lewis structure for the atom has two unpaired electrons. It likes to form two bonds. Over here, we see that oxygen formed two bonds. So that's a pattern. It is sometimes violated, but it's helpful. Any questions? What about polyatomic ions? We have to consider the charges. So we're going to start out the same, make a skeleton. So here we have two elements. They must be bonded to each other, chlorine and oxygen. 
If you put the oxygen on the left, it's fine. Then we have to count up number of electrons. How many valence electrons does chlorine have? Seven. And oxygen has six. What do we do with that negative charge? We see the negative, and it makes us want to subtract, doesn't it? But the negative charge means that it has an extra negative charge, an extra electron. So we have to add one. So this one's going to have 14 electrons. I already have two electrons in the bond. So 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14. I have enough electrons to just spread them around, and we don't have to share more. I do need to finish this off, though, because this is a, an ion. I need to put brackets around it and a charge on the outside. Now, I'll warn you about mastering chemistry. They apparently haven't figured out how to do the brackets. So when you draw Lewis structures for polyatomic ions or ions of any kind of mastering chemistry, it doesn't have the capability to do brackets. So don't text me and ask me where the bracket button is. There's no bracket button. I think it's dumb too, but there it is. Okay. Any questions about that one?